In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make the most delicious glazed ham. I'm going to be taking the skin off. I'll show you how I score it, I start it, how I glaze it, how I bake it, what goes into the glaze. It is the most beautiful dish and I can't wait to share this with you. Thanks. G'day everybody and welcome back to my Aussie gardening kitchen. If it's your first time here, my name's Darren, but please call me Daz. I'm really happy to be sharing this video as part of a multi-channel collaboration for a collaboration called the 12 Days of Christmas Indulgence 2022. And do stick around for more information about it because there's actually a chance for you to win a prize. The first thing I do is put a damp tea towel onto the bench under my cutting board. It stops the board from slipping around and when using a sharp knife, it's going to help me guarantee that I've still got the same amount of fingers when I've finished my work. The first thing to do is to make the circular cut all the way around in the bottom section like this because what I'm going to do is leave the skin on the very bottom section and remove it from the top section and you're going to be surprised if you haven't done it before at how easy it actually is to remove the skin off the top section of the ham. It is so easy. So when looking at it from the front like this you can see that there's a layer of fat and you can actually get your finger in there. If you need to you can get a knife in there to make a bit of an incision to get your finger in and you want to leave a nice thick layer of fat on top of the ham. We need that there, but we're trying to remove the skin and the skin only. And then it's just a matter of running my finger while peeling back on the skin and pushing down with my finger, adding pressure as I go along and pulling the skin back all the way around. And it's quite a simple process of just going around the whole leg of ham and doing that. There could be sections where the skin is stuck to the fat a little bit more than the rest of it. So getting a sharp knife and carefully scraping away at it and peeling it back like you did with your finger is going to remove the skin from the fat. And it's a really good process, a quick process. It doesn't take that long at all. And once that's done, you've got the most beautiful leg of ham that's ready to go for the next stage. The next step is to score the ham and you don't want to cut too deep. So you don't want to be cutting down into the flesh. You only want to be cutting maybe, say, three quarters of the way through the fat. So the best way that I find about going about it is to cut it all in one direction first. In lines are about the thickness of my thumb in between them. And then once that's done, I turn it around and I go back in the other direction. And that gives me some really nice score marks that are going to give a diamond type shape, I guess, scoring on the fat. Once you've got that scoring done, you can then get some cloves and then spike cloves into those diamond patterns. I like to put cloves in every section. It's up to you whether you want to do it in every second section, every third section. You do it the way you like it, but I personally prefer to do it in every section. And then that way you're getting that clove flavor that's going to incorporate itself with the other flavors that I'm going to add to the outside of the ham and also seep down into the juices in the bottom of the pan when it's baking. It's a bit of a tedious process, but it's really worth it in the end. And then once I've got it started finally with all those cloves all over it, I pour water into the pan and then that whole pan with the ham goes into the oven and I bake it slowly and I'll put the temperatures on the screen right now. If you don't mind, I just want to take this moment to tell you all about the 12 Days of Christmas Indulgence 2022 collaboration hosted by Renee at Pine Creek Farm. What's happening is we've all come together, a whole bunch of channels, and we're sharing our Christmas themed or our Christmas food themed videos for you during the 5th and the 16th of December. And then on the 18th of December, Renee is having a live stream where she's going to pick somebody's comment at random and they're going to win an awesome prize, which I believe is a charcuterie board. Now, you need to be watching our videos. All of our videos are commenting meaningfully. No cutting and pasting. And going back to Renee's channel on the 18th of December, watching the live stream and seeing if you've won by your comment, which may be picked randomly. Thanks very much, Renee, for having me as a part of this collaboration. I'm so excited to share this particular recipe and also to be a part of your collaboration is just awesome. Thank you so much. While the ham's baking away in the oven, it's time to make my delicious apricot glaze. It is so good. 
So I get my apricot jam into the pot on the stove and to that I'm adding my brown sugar. I'm also adding some delicious French mustard and some honey. I want some honey in there as well. Now I'm going to get that to boil and have it simmering and what I like to do is to actually have that simmer down a little bit and reduce slightly because it's going to concentrate the flavors. It's going to make it slightly stickier and it's going to be such a wonderful glaze to pour over the ham and glaze the ham. And then I like to get a spoon, say a dessert spoon and just move it through and lift it up and just see if it's stuck to the back nicely. And I'm just looking for a nice little coating on the back to see how thick and sticky it's getting. Now that the ham has had a good chance to get cooking in the oven and get a beautiful color on the outside of it, it looks fantastic, but we still need to glaze it. So we get that nice, sticky, delicious glaze and spoon it on. And then I get a pastry brush and I get into those nooks and crannies and all those cracks and make sure everything's covered underneath and in those cracks, all over the top, you name it. Really coat that thing well, get that glaze on there. So the ham goes back into the oven to finish cooking and to make that sticky, beautifully sweet glaze stick all over it and gloss up and glaze it and also drip down into the juices and add to the juices which are going to be our sauce eventually. Don't use it all though. What I like to do is save some of the glaze, say maybe half a cup, and we're going to be making a sauce of that a bit later on. So out comes the ham for the final time, and it's absolutely beautifully sticky and glazed and delicious, but the job's not done yet. We've still got another step to go. I take this beautifully glazed ham out of the pan and put it onto another tray. And you might be able to see a little bit of sticky goodness in between the ham and the tray there. Yum. Then I'm putting my leftover glaze, it's in the saucepan on a low heat on the stove taking my pan of all those delicious juices and just giving that pan a brush around with a brush. I'm trying to get all the sticky goodness off the sides and the bottom of the pan and mixing it all into that liquid. Once that's done, I pour that into my pot of glaze. Once you've added those delicious pan juices to that sticky sweet glaze, give it a good stir and make sure you bring it to the boil. Get it simmering at the start and then get it up to a nice rolling boil and just let it boil away. Just giving it a stir occasionally, making sure it doesn't overflow because that's going to make one big mess if you overflow it. And also you don't want to burn it, so keep an eye out on that. What I like to do is just keep it boiling away, reducing it down slightly. Again, as I said before, to enhance the flavour and also to just make it a little bit stickier. It doesn't take too long at all. Once that's done, I pour that into the pan where I've got my ham and that's job done. It's now time to move it to the side and actually carve and serve up. Oh wow, it looks so good. And sitting here talking about it now after the fact, my mouth's drooling and I can't have any. Oh, it's such a shame. So now it's just a matter of slicing it into the thicknesses that you desire. Try not to eat all the really nice little bits and leaving some for other people. That delicious sauce that we made with the glaze and the pan juices, I love to pour that over the ham as well. It adds beautiful flavor to the ham. And also you've already got the ham with that awesome glaze on the outside. So when people eat their slices, they're going to get that crusty outer layer where they bite into it and get a hint of that awesome glaze. And then you've got the additional flavor from the sauce. It's just a win-win situation. You can't go wrong with this recipe and the way that I've done it here. Now what's great about making that extra sauce slash glaze on the side is that over the next day or so when you're having leftovers or maybe you're slicing some to take to a function or someone else's house, you've got it to be able to pour over the top of it and add some flavor and 
keeping that ham nice and moist. Oh, it's so good. This is the way I do my glazed ham every year. I don't vary this recipe at all because it's just there in the right amount of flavor that I want and the gooiness and the stickiness and the sweetness combined with the ham and the apricot and oh, it's just so good. I've got another video popping up onto the screen right now and I'd love for you to click on that and check that out next. Thank you so much for being here and watching my video today. I do appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.